Hey everyone, my name is Jordan Buccaneer from Traveland RV and I'm doing a walkthrough on a Jayco travel trailer we have at Traveland RV. Now, this may have differences from the Jayco that you're getting, but I want to touch on functionalities on everything on these travel trailers. First off, we're going to be starting with the front tongue jack. So this here on this Jayco Rocky Mountain is a electric tongue jack. So it, all you need to do is go up and down with this, which is very simple by pushing up and pushing down. Now a couple other things this, this electric jug, tongue jack has is a push button for a light to make it easier for when you're hooking up in the dark. Plus, even has a manual override. So this hole right here is, you're more than welcome to peek in. Let's get this all situated here. Manual crank, so you can actually crank this up and down in case you don't have battery power or no plug-in. Makes it super easy. Now you may have a different setup there. You may even have a manual crank. Now this manual crank is super easy to work and you can always upgrade to a, this electric jack if you like to make your life a little easier. So moving to the propane tanks, on this particular unit, we have two propane tanks with a cover on top. I'm gonna actually take this off for you so that you can see the propane tanks in full. Place this down here. You'll see we have two 30 pounds. You may have one tank, you may have two 20 pound tanks, but they all hook up the same here. So easy, open to close them there. You'll see it right on top. There is arrows for both ways. Now, another thing you may see when you have two tanks is a regulator. So this is an automatic regulator where you'll have an arrow pointing to one tank or the other. This is currently pointing at the left hand tank here. And it, so it is drawing propane from this left hand side. Now, if you want to swap it to the other one, all you do is change that arrow to the other side and it will automatically start sourcing out of this other propane tank. Now that feature is really nice when this propane tank is empty, you want to swap it over to the other tank so that you can actually disconnect one tank and go fill it up at the gas station. Now, some gas stations will also have the 20 pound propane tank fill station if you want to do the uh, swaps for the propanes or if you just want to fill it right up, you can do that too. Now you'll see more up front is we have a battery box right here. Now from Traveland, we give you a 12 volt battery to start up with. Now that will be good for three days running off battery power if you're good and gentle with it. Now, if you want to get more days, you can always upgrade to two six volts, which you can situate side by side here. Or you can always talk to our parts department about getting a, a AGM batteries or even lithium if you like. So that is an idea for you to look into. It adds extra battery power and adds extra length to duration of your stay. Now, even if you wanted to get longer stays with this too, you can uh, get you to pop right over here. Right down here is a plug-in for a solar panel. Now this is made specifically for a portable solar panel, which you'll see I actually had brought one out just to show you what uh, the case looks like. Uh, this is a small 90 watt solar panel that will keep your battery chopped up and will keep you camping longer. That is a good idea if you ever want to upgrade to getting a solar panel, you can get the portable or even get one mounted on the roof. But like I said, it's made to extend your stay. Now that we're on the side of the trailer here, I wanted to show you the stabilizing jacks. This particular Jayco actually has them on all four corners. You'll see these jacks right down here. They are made to stabilize the trailer as you walk through or even the kids run around. It's nice to crank them down and even stick them on blocks if you're on grass or gravel so it spreads out the area and even you might need a little bit of height depending on where you are. Uh, those blocks are called Lynx Levelers. You can get them here at Travel Land. They're nice and easy to build up and stack onto each other. So this particular Jayco has a slide out. There's a few things you want to do before even opening your slide and that is to make sure that the area is completely clear. You'll see that this is a deeper slide so you want to make sure there is no trees or rocks in the way of your slide out before you put it out. Now a few things on that as well is that you want to make sure your slide stays healthy especially the seal around it. You can see right here there is a rubber seal that goes all the way around your slide out. 
Now to keep it nice and healthy, especially throughout the summer where it's nice and dry out, you do want to make sure it is lubricated. So I do recommend putting on some slide seal lubricant all the way across the slide as much as you can. Keep it on that seal, up and then down. And when you put that on, you also want to close your slide and open it back up. That will actually flip this seal over and back so you get both sides so it stays nice and lubricated. Now, another thing I want to touch on before we pass on the slide is that the top of the slide, you'll see is a nice flat surface. So before you do close your slide out, you do want to make sure that there is no branches or pine cones on top of your slide, as that, when you bring in your slide, could puncture that slide seal that we just talked about. A good thing to do is make sure you wipe off the top of your slide before closing it each time, or at least check up there. Another thing you can do is actually install a slide topper, which we do here at Traveland RV. It works as a protectant for the top of the slide and a awning sitting over top of the slide so nothing actually lands in that area up there. When you are using your RV, you want to make sure that your RV is as flat as possible. Doing so, you want to make sure that you are using levelers, whether it's in the front where your tongue jack is and even where the tires are in case your left to right is not leveled. A good thing that we use here is our curve levelers, which you'll see there. You can actually drive up on them, then click the block into place so that you're nice and leveled. Uh, we also use Lynx levelers and several other products you're more than welcome to check out. On the side of your Jayco here, you'll see there's a few different components, but we're gonna touch on the city water connection right now. That there is where you're going to be hooking up from your trailer to the campsite of your choosing. Now that campsite may have a higher pressure of water than you know of. It could be 100 PSI. For that reason, we want you to use a water pressure regulator as a lot of these trailers are not made for that 100 PSI water. What this does is it regulates the pressure down to 45 PSI, what these trailers are regulated to or made for, and this goes between the hose and the trailer itself. Now with that, you do also want to use a clean water hose, which you'll see has a blue stripe down it. You'll see right above the city water connection is a outdoor shower. This may or may not be on the Jayco you have, but it's very simple to use. It has a cotton cold nozzle and a full pull out faucet for you to use for whatever you choose. You'll see right above that outdoor shower is this component right here. This is actually a black tank flush. So this particular Jayco has a black tank flush that goes hand in hand with the black water tank. That black water tank is made for the toilet water. So you'll see right underneath here, we have this tube. This right here is for your black water and your gray water. There is two handles down here, one that is gray and one that is black that you'll see I'm holding on to the black one right here and the gray right there. This is for dumping all your tanks. How you want to do this is you want to hook up your hose, put it into the ground and then get started. First thing you want to do is pull that black handle to empty out your toilet water. That clears everything out of the toilet. Then, remember that tank flush I was talking about? You want to hook up a hose to there and spray water into your black tank to give it a nice clean out. Now, if you don't have that, that is okay. You can actually wash out this hose by pulling that gray handle because that water is actually going to be your sink and shower water. So it's going to be a little bit cleaner than the toilet water would be. So you clean out the hose with that. One thing you can do to know that you are completely clean is use a clear plastic piece either at the end or at the beginning of your hookup. That allows you so you can actually know that it is fully clean and there is clear liquid coming out of there. Last thing on this side that I want to show you is this right here. This Jayco actually has a cable and satellite input that will be directed directly to the TV on the inside. So when you have a campsite that has cable or satellite, you can actually use their coax, plug it into there and get cable and satellite directly to your TV. Now let's take a look at everything we have on the back of your trailer here. This particular layout has the power cord coming out of the back of the trailer. You'll see that this is actually a 30 amp power cord. 
We do give you the adapter to go down to 15 amps so that you can charge the trailer and batteries at your home. Now, in case you're at a campsite where you don't really know and you want to make sure that you're being extra safe, you could always look at getting a surge guard. This here is a 30 amp surge guard that protects you in case the park has a surge of power. It will stop it right here instead of going into the trailer and causing an issue there. Safety measures that will help out. But let's take a further look inside here at the hot water tank, which is also on the back in this particular layout. You'll see that there's several different types of hot water tanks out there. This one here actually has drain plugs in it, which you'll see right here, instead of an anode rod. You may have an anode rod, which does look like this, in case you needed to know, plugs and anode rods. Two different types of hot water tanks that may happen here, or you may have. This particular hot water tank is a electric and propane start. So I will show you how to work that once we get inside but you'll see this right here is a pressure release valve. You may see some steam or hot water dripping out of that in case it is just blowing pressure. This particular layout actually comes with a barbecue and an outdoor kitchen. That being said, the barbecue actually sits right on this rack here, which I'm gonna open up for you and swing around. And you can sit that barbecue right on top of this and put all your brushes right here. So you'll see right underneath your barbecue rack is actually a hookup for propane. This right here is a quick connect for a direct line to the propane tanks up front. You'll see on this particular Jayco here, you actually have an outdoor kitchen. So you'll see you'll have an outdoor fridge that works directly on electric when you're plugged in. Plus you'll have a two burner cooktop that works off of that quick connect that your barbecue does, except you have another one actually right underneath. So you can run your barbecue and two burner stove at the same time, which is great. Plus you'll even have a sink here that is plumbed right into your gray tank. All of this is nice and easy to just tuck away, unlatch and lock up just like that. Now you'll see right next to it, there is a awning. This is great because this goes out eight feet and even actually has speakers inside of the awning. So your speakers may be in a different position. They may be at the bottom of the awning. They may be on the side of the RV. This particular one has the speakers in the top. We'll go over that. I'm actually gonna show you how to open up the awning and everything from the inside and we can watch it go out together as well. Going more along the side here, I'm gonna to touch on a few of these other items and then we're gonna peek inside. So you'll see this is actually the inside of your fridge. What you wanna make sure is your fridge is that you will have a white drip line. You wanna make sure either that is in the drip tray or leading outside through these grates here to make sure that that drip from the condensation of your fridge is going outside or going to evaporate with the heat of the fridge. Another thing that you may consider with your fridge is seeing these little holes here to put a little mesh strips on top. A little helpful hint is that bees actually like to make nests inside of warm areas. So if you push, put uh, mesh strips around here, they can't get in and stops them from making nests. A little helpful hint for you. Put this back on and then we'll take a look at your furnace output. This right here is going to be in several different locations on every RV. It is your furnace output so there will be hot air pumping out of here when your furnace is running. That means you want to make sure that you are not touching it and you don't lean chairs against it as of course it does get hot. Now along the other parts here you'll see there is two plugins and a cable and satellite output for if you want to run a TV outside. It's always nice. It's right underneath your awning here. What a thing to do, right? Have the game on outside. Now, this is another important component here. That is actually your gravity fill for your fresh water tank. So when you plan on doing dry camping, which means no plugins, 
off the grid, just running off your battery and what water you have in your tank. This is actually how you fill your tank. You can pour water into your tank, you use a hose and fill that tank right up so that it's nice and full and you can start your camping trip from there. Now another idea is you can actually fill this tank closer to where you plan on parking so you're not traveling around with a full tank. Another thing with this, it might be hard to see in the camera, but there is a little grate there because when the water actually, sorry, the water tank is full, you'll actually get water coming out of here as an overfill so you actually know it's completely full. Thing to keep an eye out when you're looking for your trailer. Now, we are just about ready to head inside. Uh, a few more things to a little bit touch on, of course, is your pull handle here, which you can actually bend across the door or even the other way, it's a nice extension here. Some of these trailers don't come with this, which you can actually add on as a nice little feature to give you a little more of a standing grip for getting on inside. Now, stairs, they're gonna be different through every type of RV. These here are nice and easy to work. You fold this up and then actually just fold this in and give it a nice push. So you'll see that's nice and tucked away, ready to travel, nice and easy. I'm gonna pull these back out here. What you'll notice beside me right there is actually just a door stopper. Uh, that's when the door is open, you can actually keep it open by locking it there, and which I'll actually quickly show you right here. It's a little latch on the door right here. Open it up, latch it in, keeps it from opening. Now you're thinking now you have a wide open door, you may not want that because of bugs. Well, we do have a screen door for you to close on this, gets right out of the way. This sliding piece that you just saw me do there is so that you can still access it, pass anything through. You'll see this on a lot of the Jayco's that we have. Let me open that back up because we're about to pop right inside. So one thing I wanted to show you here, you'll see is a low point drain. Underneath here is going to be a white drain that you'll see right by my hand. This is actually how you drain your fresh water tank when you're ready to dump it out. You actually just open that out, let it drain out, and it's just clean water that you're dumping. So feel free to dump it wherever you like. So before we get too far inside, I just wanted to show you the awning. So you'll see there is a button right here that says awning out it and then in and out with a couple arrows. Nice and simple but we're gonna show you exactly how this works and tell you when you should stop and show you what it actually looks like. So I'm gonna be hitting out right now and we're gonna be taking a look at it. So if you remember from before, I said that this awning actually goes out eight feet. So this is going to keep going until a flap actually hangs down and that's when you want to let go of the button. So we're gonna let this go for another little bit here. You'll see that flap hanging down. When that hangs down, you do want to stop right there as that is all the way extended. Now remember those speakers I was speaking about before? If you look straight up, you're actually gonna see that speaker right there. So that's pointing right down at your campsite. Like I said, some speakers might be right here. Some speakers might be on the side of the trailer. Another thing that's really cool about this awning is that you can actually adjust the pitch. So right here, if you pull this area down and take a look at the awning now, we have a different pitch to the awning. I'll do that again so you can see the actual awning. Pull that down, we have a different pitch to the awning itself. So if you have a different shade angle you're trying to get, you'll see if you actually look at the shadow here, you're on a full different angle. Plus, if there is a light bit of rain, it will pour it off to one side. Now, if there is heavy rain, wind, or you are leaving your trailer, you do want to put your awning in, as we don't want anything to happen because of natural disasters, of course. And before you do want to put your awning in, you do want to make sure if you do have it pitched, you put it right back to normal, back to straight, ready to go, it can go back inside. Uh, but before we do that, take a look at the top. You'll see a nice light. That's really going to light this whole area up in the dark, make it so your camping experience can be used in day and night. Let's put this awning away and go back inside. 
So now that we have the awning inside, I did want to go over the slide room as well. So as you remember, you do want to check the slide to make sure it's clear before putting it in and out, which I've already done. And you'll see there's a nice and easy in and out. I'm going to push in this in button, which you'll hear some noise. And also, if you want to take a look around, you'll be able to see it work in the magic. So you'll see the slide actually comes up a little bit on an angle and comes in. We're just going to wait for it to come in here and we're going to hear a little bit of a, a gear noise and that's how you know when to stop. Of course, if you don't have a slide, you won't have to worry about this. But that's how you know when to stop there. And you'll see that the slide out is back in level up top. Now we still have access to everything inside, whether you want to get to the fridge, the bathroom, or even to the beds. We'll take a look at this layout a little bit in more detail when I put the slide out back out. Nice and simple though. We just hit out. Now we already know that beside us is clear. Again, I'm gonna re reassure you that you wanna make sure that you want to check the outside, make sure there is no cars, trees, rocks, anything that is gonna intrude on the slide out opening. There you go. So this slide out function is pretty similar on all the Jayco trailers here, uh, which is quite nice and the awning as well. You'll see a few more things here. This right here is two light switches. One being inside, which you probably just saw on the camera there, plus this light here being that LED awning strip that we saw outside. Nice and simple. Usually you'll find these two switches close to the door for the main indoor and also for the awning. So now that we're looking at the tanks, I'm actually these three gray buttons here, we can push down and see the level of our tanks. So you'll see right now, I'm going to have an empty fresh water tank and the gray and the black are should be both empty as well. While we are doing your trailer, if you want a full water tank, please do let us know and we can fill it before we uh, deliver it to you before you pick it up. We can get that all ready for you as well. Um, now you'll see underneath of it, there's going to be the lettering in red, which might be hard to read on the camera as well, but that is your battery level from low to completely charged there. Now a nice easy click will tell us that we have the battery completely charged. Now that is a little bit of a misread because we are actually plugged in right now. When you are plugged in, you're not getting a true charge or a true reading on the battery. So before you leave to go camping, make sure you unplug it and then check where your battery is at from there. Good little hint there. Uh, now we can talk about these three red buttons at the bottom. These three are going to be for your water. So two are going to be your water heater and one is going to be for your water pump. Uh, for your water pump, I'll touch on that first. That water pump is used to pressurize water from when you were dry camping. It'll use water from your water tank, pressurize it to the fixtures. Whether you're using the sink, the shower, the toilet, you want to make sure that you turn that water pump on. You'll hear it pressurize, then you're able to use your water from your water tank. Now, if you're connected to city water, you don't need that water pump because the water is already pressurized coming from the city. For the two other buttons there, that is actually your water heater you'll see underneath it says LP gas and electric. Two different types to run your water heater. Uh, you can run it on straight gas, which is propane working and heating it, or you can heat it off of electric. This tank will actually work faster and heat up faster on propane, of course, which is nice and easy. You just give it a click. You'll see that turn red. We want to open up a, some water so, so you get some water into the actual hot water tank and let it heat up from there. So I wanted to go over the entertainment system with you guys on this Jayco here, which is gonna be working pretty similar in all the Jaycos. Uh, if you have a TV set up, you, right now we are actually sourcing TV off of air. So we are getting about 10 free channels where we are now off of the antenna that is on the roof. Now, 
right here there is a button to turn on and off that antenna. You'll see it's where your cable box or your cable line is going in and you'll see a green light and there's a little black button which you won't be able to see in the video completely. But if you look at the TV, uh, might be hard to tell, it's now completely frozen because I actually turned off that antenna from that button. Turn it back on, it's going to start the TV back up, we uh, can turn on the volume and everything like that. Now, like I said, it's only going to pick up channels from the air. You might get 5, you might get 10, you might get lucky and get 12. So, from there, this is all going to be wired in to your blue or your Bluetooth uh, DVD player, USB auxiliary, uh, all right here. I'm going to turn off the TV right now, and then we're going to kind of take a look at down here so you guys aren't distracted by the TV. Um, right now, you'll see, whew, I'm gonna turn that down so we're not blasting it in here. But you'll see, like I said, you have the USB auxiliary uh, DVD and also HDMI, but also Bluetooth here. It also works as an AM, FM, plus uh, your speakers inside and outside. So to work this is right here. Speaker zone one and two. One will be inside, two will be outside, like those outdoor speakers that I was speaking about in the awning. You can work it as going to Bluetooth, working in your Bluetooth, or you could plug directly into your auxiliary and change the mode to go to, uh, we, we just have to go through it and go to auxiliary here, which I believe, oh, that's TV. So you go through the system, you find uh, the auxiliary, or you could go to USB and even the HDMI, which is going through the mode. You could plug a, a DVD right in there, just like your regular DVD player at home. It's already wired up to the TV. We do give you remotes, but the volume button is right here as well. Nice and simple to work. Works as your main stereo or DVD player for your this TV here. And of course, because of this is just a different layout than you may have, you may have different storage all around the TV system. You even may have a TV in the bedroom. I'll show you a little bit in the bedroom here that you can have a TV on this wall up here, maybe in a different location, but you'll see there is plugins and the coax for cable or satellite there as well. Now, a lot of these Jayco's do have a similar style bed where you do get storage underneath. You'll see we have a large amount of storage in this one. Uh, again, uh, you may have a different layout, so it may be a little bit of a different size depending on which you bought. And of course, storage all the way around. With reading lights, we're going to be over the master beds. You'll see these ones here don't actually work off of a remote. Or oh, sorry, uh, switch. They'll actually work off of pushing the button right here. So you'll see it's nice and easy on the light there. That is a lot of these Jayco's come commonly with this kind of light. Now, because you have the switch for the main roof that does all of them down the middle, you can even go to each light if you did want to just have one or two lights on while you're watching a movie. Kind of a nice thing to do. Um, You'll see the dinette is sitting right there, which you can also make into a bed. Now, this style is going to be a, a little bit different from what you may have, or it could be the same. All functions, basically we want to lift this up here. You'll see, I think I just dropped one of the pedestals. But this will now turn into the bed by sitting down on this bracket you see here. So I'm just going to quickly make this bed for you. As you can see, this does sit on the bracket, so we want to make sure that we are placing this table on the bracket here below. We may require to lift up some of the cushions here, which I'm just going to do from each side. There you go. And then from there, you can actually push these cushions together. And now you have your bed. If you do plan on using this as a bed and do want to block that sun coming in in the morning, you can actually use these shades that come down here. They're nice and easy to pull down, pull down all the way there. And when you're done with them, 
just lift them back up. Nice and easy happens on all these windows here. All of these will have the same style of shades and are pretty standard in these Jayco tray flights. Now I'm gonna go on and talk about the kitchen here. Uh, you'll see that the microwave is up top. It's pretty straightforward to use. Uh, you do need full electricity to use it as in a 30 amp or 15 amp plug-in. Um, right below that, you're gonna see the light and the fan for the stove top, just like you have at home there. Then we get to the stove itself. So with the stove, you'll see I actually have it nice and lit up with the blue light, which is kind of nice about these new Furion stoves if you do get one in your trailer there. Uh, with this style, it is a automatic start. So what we need to do is we need to put it on the flame here and then actually give it a little flick and spark it. And then you'll see there's a nice clean flame going all the way around. We could do that to the other two get them nice and started so we can get cooking, get the party started. We're gonna set the settings from there, go to a lower flame on all of them. You'll see it's nice and easy to control. We'll just put them all off here. Now this far one is the oven. Right below the oven, we have this right here. This is your converter. So this is gonna have your breakers and also fuses in it and controls all the power that comes into the unit. So that will actually be converting the power from 110 to 12 volt, working off that battery. So going right beside it, still staying down here, you'll see there's gonna be a little bit of uh, slats here. That right there is your furnace. So you'll see that is just gonna be the intake for your furnace and the outputs of course are through the floor. Um, you might have different areas, of course, where the furnace is going to come out. And I'll show you how to work the furnace in just a second. But I'm just going to touch on the fridge and freezer first. So you'll see this one has an 8 cubic foot fridge and freezer in it. Uh, I actually already have it cold because I've let it run for a little bit here. I've been letting it run off electricity. This is a two-way fridge. So it runs on electricity and propane, which is all worked right here. This is a Norco fridge. You may have a different style fridge in the Jayco that you have, but you'll see that most of them do have a on and off switch, of course, um, and the ability to go from propane or electric. This one is easy because you just hit mode and you'll see there's a nice little light up screen here and we can click through it by going to electric, gas, or automatic. Nice thing about automatic is that it is automatically going to source electricity and if it doesn't find electricity, it will turn on the propane fridge or get it started, sorry, off of propane. So it's kind of a nice feature to have with a lot of these fridges do come with. And then of course you'll have your temperature gauge, which is on this fridge particularly one to five. Nice setting is going to be about three or four so you don't freeze everything in your fridge. So, um, going back to the furnace that I want to touch on, that is right here. This is your thermostat actually. You'll see I just touched it and it lit up blue. This is going to control your heat and your AC. So I'm going to go through this. It might be hard to see in the uh, actual camera itself, but I'm going to try my best to describe everything going on here. So right now I have just clicked it on cool which is going to be the AC. It's actually going to come out right above me here if you want to take a look. You'll see this right here is the intake for the AC and right here is a duct that I can open to have it a direct duct right outside. Sorry, it might have been a little bit loud there. But if you close that duct off, you're actually going to get more pressure going to these other roof vents which you can open up and they lead into the bedroom into the bunks we have in the back, and even into the bathroom we have. So that works all off of that thermostat, and you can change the temperature. See, right now I'm on uh, 55 Fahrenheit. Um, if you hold the two arrows down at the same time, it'll change it to Celsius if you prefer that. But right now I'm on 13, and I can go up and down from there. Now, if you, are, of course, don't want the AC and you want the furnace, I'm going to give this mode a click once and that is going to switch it to furnace. 
Now, right now, the AC is still gonna take a minute to turn off as it is still blowing out all of the air that it just in took. Um, you'll see I did already switch to Celsius, so it is going to be 27 degrees Celsius for the furnace now, which you can even crank up, of course, if you really wanna get nice and toasty in here. So that comes out of the floor, which we already talked about. You'll kind of hear it running and click in as soon as that goes. You just want to make sure that your propane is open. A nice little hint with this, uh, if you get to your campsite and want to get your, your furnace flowing and get that hot air going, I would suggest starting your stove top first as that gets the propane flowing through the system. As when you are driving, you don't wanna have your propane on, of course, you wanna make sure that it is turned off for safety reasons. Now again, going through this is you just hit mode to go through the cycles to go to AC and to the furnace. You just hit hitting mode and right now it's a blank screen and says a little small off at the bottom. You probably won't be able to see it in the camera. So I actually just pulled off one of the panels from underneath the sink here to give you guys a quick little look at your water pump and what you're going to be using to winterize your trailer here. So you can see in there what your water pump looks like and you'll see that this line is actually attached from your water pump. Um, this is how we actually put uh, antifreeze into the system here. We use a RV antifreeze, so it is a drinkable antifreeze and no toxins or anything like that. But you want to make sure that you do that in the winter so that your RV lines and underbelly don't freeze from the water being in there. Now to do that, you actually want to buy the jugs of antifreeze, stick this in the jug itself, uh, underneath where your pump is, you'll see there is a little bit of a, uh, just a switch that you have to turn that uh, switch it to sucking up from this line here. And then we want to turn on your, your water pump and open up all of the fixtures in the trailer to get that antifreeze flowing to the lines. So as you stick this in there, you go to your tap up in the kitchen here, you open that and you have the antifreeze, you wanna make sure there's pink antifreeze coming out of your, sphink, your sink to make sure that that is properly winterized. Now, that is the same thing you wanna do for the bathroom as well. You wanna make sure there's a little bit of uh, pink in the toilet, so you flush down the toilet a little bit, which we'll get to in a second. And of course, the shower and bathroom sink if you have one as well. So I just wanted to give you a quick idea of the bathroom and what we need to look for in here. So uh, relatively, a lot of the bathrooms are gonna be the same when it comes to the toilet, shower function, sink, and all of that. Uh, different styles, of course, and everything like that. This particular toilet uh, you'll see here is a tall toilet and a foot flush. So if I have water in the system, I would step on it halfway and then a full step to flush it down. Now you'll see that goes right into what, if you remember the black tank, and that it's the toilet water. Before you start your camping trip, you do wanna make sure that we put a toilet chemical down there to make sure that the smell uh, stays down there and also breaks down everything that goes into this toilet. Um, that being said, this is what we do here is we use these porta packs. Uh, it's basically a little, as you can see, a little package there. You put it in a toilet with, again, a little bit of water, half step down to get water in the bowl, full step to flush it. It's good to flush these down into the tank to make sure that, that all that smell stays down there and everything gets broken down properly. So one more thing that I want to mention about the toilets is that you do want to use a RV or biodegradable toilet paper as you see here. It makes it easier to break down uh, with that toilet chemicals that I mentioned earlier, plus doesn't gump up around in that black tank because those sensors that I showed you, we don't want any three-ply toilet paper to get stuck on those sensors and not able to get off. 
Um, just going to close the toilet here. Uh, another thing that we're going to go over, of course, um, you'll see this has a large shower, which is always nice. Big skylight up above it. You can always upgrade your shower head if you want to get a nice fancier shower head, of course, um, which we do stock here at Traveland. Now that you're looking at the vent there, you can see that there is a little fan plus a black button and a crank right there. Uh, you can actually use that fan to get out the steam that happens when you are showering so that no moisture occurs in your bathroom, of course. Now, that fan can always be upgraded to something called a fantastic fan or even a max air fan. That is used as a big 12 inch fan, probably twice the size of that one there to get out even more air. And sometimes you'll even have more vents spread out throughout the entire trailer. You might want to throw those in to just get more air out. They're very fantastic. As you can hear in the name there, they are very nice to use. And especially when you don't have the AC, it does get a little bit more air flowing throughout the trailer. Uh, that being said, another thing you can do with these vents even if you don't have a fantastic fan, you can put on something called a Max Air cover. Now what that is, it's a shroud over top of the vent. So right now, I don't have a cover on. If I open this up right now, which you'll see here, we can see the bright blue sky we have outside. Now, if it wasn't a bright blue sky and it was raining and I wanted this vent open when I was showering, I would have water coming inside my trailer, which is never good. If you had that max air cover on top, which I'm actually gonna get you to back up here and I'll show you what that looks like. Brought one out here. It looks just like this right here. It sits on top of your roof there and works as a blockage for any rain, as you can see it's on an angle, will still let that airflow come in and when you let that fan work, as you see it has a grate there as well for any bugs, but it's great, you can even have your vent open when you're driving. Because if you're driving and you have that lid open, there is a good chance that you're gonna lose that lid completely. So those are a good thing to keep in mind and we can always do them before you pick up your trailer. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough on this Jayco trailer here, and I hope this helped you get your camping started. Now, if you want any of these items that I've discussed to be added to your trailer beforehand, please let one of our parts representatives know, or even your salesperson. Or if you have any questions about anything that I've shown you today, please give a call out to our parts representatives, and they will give you a hand. Thank you.